I'm Marianne Matthews, Chief Editor of Imaging Economics, and I'm here today at the CareStream booth at RSNA with Christine Coe, Global Marketing Director for Healthcare IT. Uh, we're talking today about some uh, important solutions in the um, healthcare IT arena and challenges for radiology providers. Christine, you know a lot about all of these areas, <laughs> so let's start with some of my readers are radiologists in private practice, mm -hmm. and I'm hearing a lot about uh, stage two meaningful use. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you tell me, do you think private practice radiologists are indeed prepared for it? and? If not, what should they be doing? Yeah, you know, um, I just recently read some in industry statistics that, in fact, radiology adoption for meaningful use is still quite low, which means I think there's still opportunity for us to educate a lot of standalone imaging uh, centers or practitioners to understand what it meaningful use can mean for them. Um, and, and one of the reasons why our product has been certified for both as a complete EHR or as an EHR module is so that a standalone imaging center could actually be meaningful use certified using our risk product. And so, um, and we definitely see a market for that, um, but definitely more education is needed. And do you think challenges for stage two for the private practice radi radiologist is going to be equally as difficult as the uh, stage one challenges? You know, that's a great question. So one of the key requirements for meaningful use stage two is actually patient engagement which means that um, physicians need to be able to provide some kind of patient portal to engage their uh, patients to be able to access their information online and actually sharing information as well. And so I believe once they overcome the first hurdle, if you will, of using the technology, the distribution via a, say, patient imaging portal becomes much easier because now you have information that's already digitally stored and now you can actually distribute that to the patients quite easily, probably more so than some of the larger facilities. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Let me switch gears here for just a sure. moment and let's talk about my, my hospital readers. Um, I'm hearing a lot about VNAs. Oh, yes. So, this needs to be done properly. A, a community hospital, for example, can't afford to fail because implementing a solution is, is costly, as you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. What is your advice to community hospitals out there about selecting the right partner and the right technology for their VNA? Yeah. You know, uh, VNA is certainly a buzzword right now. Um, and we see a couple of different drivers when people are considering VNA. Number one is to look at reducing cost, consolidating multiple archives or legacy storage into one so that they could manage it easier, more efficiently, and reduce some of that operational cost. The second requirement, if you will, um, is about the workflow. Once you start storing that information, um, you know, it's about who would you like that who would you like to have access to that clinical information, right? Because that's the value of actually truly a VNA is having clinicians or referring physicians to be able to access everything about that patient. Um, so when we talk to our customers, in fact, there's so many different requirements and workflow requirements that come up as we start to explore what does VNA mean for them. And I really do encourage, especially community hospitals, when they think about VNA, don't think of it as just archiving or consolidation, but think of it as, as workflow enhancement. How do we help them distribute their information or share that information in a much more efficient manner? Okay, yeah. thank you so much. No problem. We'll be doing a lot more reports on these kinds of I'm issues sure. and we'll be turning to you, Christine. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. thank you so much for coming back. Thank you very much. Thank you.